Judy, I want to ask you a little bit about the broadcasting career. Uh, there was one video I watched when I was about 10, 11 years old. It was called Hockey the Lighter Side, a different look at a daring game. In this video, it was a hockey puck. You picked it up and you took the bite out of the hockey puck because it was a cake. That's JD's famous goaltender school where you learn how to eat pucks and like it. Now, I watched this video over 100 times, JD. It was a big part of my childhood. Um, do you remember that video? Remember. And do you remember making things like that for the kids at home so that they were inspired yeah. to be NHLers one day? Yeah, I, I love doing stuff like that. That was Hal Fisher's idea. And uh, I think it was shot on like the 64th floor in some office somewhere in Manhattan. <laughs> and, you know, if you had too many takes to take, you're eating these things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I got to do it again. <laughs> but... Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I sit here and I'm, I'm 67 years of age and I had a chance to play in the National Hockey League. I, I got traded after my first year was a really good season in St. Louis. My second year, I was so good. I got traded after the season. And one of the biggest breaks I ever got was getting traded to the Rangers and original 16 took me a while to understand Manhattan and New York fans and things like that. But there's nothing more loyal than this city once people get to know you it's it's remarkable and uh so i played in this league and I had to retire at a young age because of injury 29 and then i had a second career and got into television and and i've said this a number of times television is like playing hockey because it's a team it doesn't get on the air unless you have a, a, your team doing the job properly so you've got a a, a guy that's a general manager could be your producer your, your coach is the director. You've got all these people that do audio and video and replays. Well, they're like the penalty killers and the power plays and the checkers. And it's, it's amazing uh, that I was able to do that and then work with wonderful people, Sam Rosen in particular, just wonderful people over, over the years. And then the garden would allow us, if we were requested, to go work for other networks, whether it be the Olympics or what, all-star games, I mean, for me, that was a gift. And uh, to, I worked, I think it was five different Winter Olympics all over the world and, and memories of a lifetime. And then um, uh, another opportunity came along and that was to get into management. And I had done a lot of hockey games on television and said, I just, you know, that'd be kind of neat to see what goes on. And I took a leap of faith, talked to the family. And next thing you know, we're moving to St. Louis. And that's 15 years ago. So it's kind of like three different careers. Um, all under the same umbrella, and that's hockey. Hockey. It's such a wonderful game with great people from A to Z. You meet people all over the world, and you don't see them for 10 years, and you run into a broadcaster from what was Czechoslovakia that's now the Czech Republic, and it's a big embrace, and it just goes on and on. And you sit here and go, my gosh, I'm just a kid from Calgary. You know, I used to go up to the garden to the, to the booth before they redid it when we were working there. And by myself, and look down at the ice. There'd be nobody in the building, hardly. And just, I'm just a kid from Calgary. I, my, can you, I just, this is, this is pretty special. And then there's an extension of it where my whole family gets involved, whether it's my daughters and now the grandchildren or brothers and their wives and kids. And hockey's been a part of their lives because of hockey. It's, it's an amazing thing. I want to talk to you a little bit about your career. So I think the one thing that doesn't get talked about enough is the fear factor that you had to play with when you played in the 70s and early 80s as a goalie. You didn't have the equipment, right? And I talked not too long ago with uh, Ken Dryden about this, and he talked about how the stand-up style was mostly out of safety. That's because right. If you got too low into your crouch, you were going to get dinged up top, and I'm seeing your helmet over your left shoulder there. There's not a lot of protection, and I wonder if – what was it like when a player came down, the first shot of the game on the wing, put it at your ear, and then moments later, the next one was along the ice? And how do you yeah. deal with that? <laughs> Mickey Redmond was the, the best, or from a goalie's point of view, the worst at it when he played in Detroit. And uh, in the old days, the, the older arena there, they, they had kind of egg-shaped corners. They weren't real wide. And he'd come down the wall and zoom right by you, off the crossbar, hit the glass. And then he'd come down with the next shot, and you'd be kind of lifting up a little bit and put it on the ice. <laughs> yeah. And you could embarrass some people. I mean, a goalie, if you're going like this. <laughs> no. That's why the goal looks bad, right? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a lot of fun. But, but you know, you're, you're absolutely right. I, uh, I still have a lot of my old equipment. And I go and look at the catching glove, and my gosh, it's one-third the size of what they have today. It's, it's, yeah. 
my my nephew was a goalie. He says, "What is that? A golf glove?" I said, <laughs> 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 "You know, here, here's a true story. We played Philadelphia back to back, lost both games in Philly, and then at home. And I think the total shot volume against me in the two games was somewhere around uh, high nineties, 102, someplace in there." And I, I was exhausted after the second game. And I walked through the medical room at the garden after the game. And the doctor grabbed me. And we counted 14 uh, good-sized bruises on my legs and arms and things, 14 of them. And he told me he wanted to see me the next day in his doctor's office in, the, in Manhattan. And I lived in Westchester. I said, Doc, I, I'm not coming tomorrow. I'm dead. I need some rest. He says, I, you got to come in and I want to see you. I said, Doc, I, 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 he says, i got to see you. And here's why. When you bruise like that, you may have a problem. You may have a serious health problem. I said, Doc, have you seen what we wear and what we just did for two games? This is the nature of the beast of what we do. And so I did go in and see him. There was no blood issues, no, no you know, serious uh, problems at all, and the bruises go away. But that's what it was. And in practice, in practice, as you probably very well know, a lot of times it was just survival. You know, you had your hands up there just to protect yourself. And if guys shot high, it was a real problem uh, in practice. And our guys over the years were very good, very good at, at trying to keep the puck down and not force an injury on a player or, or beat the guy up too much. But it, it, uh, it, it, it was hard. It was hard. You know, the other one, too, while well, I'm, I'm going here, but uh, was skates. Skates, when I grew up, I finally got goalie skates when my parents could afford them. And uh, every year, you'd take a big slap shot off a toe cap on the toe, and you'd lose a toenail. That's just what it was. That's because of the, the, the smack of the puck and the, and the toe caps weren't, weren't like they are today. I think that's the biggest advantage goalies have today. There's no fear in playing the position right. regarding injury at all.